Oh, so you have the top 10 strongest. Well, let's see if what you say is true. Thank you to our fellow patrons, Red Wolf Force 65, and a Gem Lord, and Sean. Another thank you to our three dollar members, Recliner Plays, and Red Wolf Force 65. And a very big thank you to our ten dollar patron, Robbie Uchia. And another very big thank you to our twenty dollar patron, Alex Ice Rose. And a very big thank you to our twenty five dollar member, Alex Ice Rose. Now we're on this breakdown slash discussion, review, live reaction, and analysis to hundreds of top ten strongest uses Kaizen characters ranked. Please don't be afraid to leave your own ranking of the top 10 strongest Jujutsu Kaisen characters in the comments section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, hit that little notification bell to miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon down below where you support as low as one, count them one, dollar month to get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Now, Let's hop into the live reaction. What's up, guys? Elephants here, and here we are to react to and break down hundreds top 10 strongest Jutsu Kaisen characters ranked. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I just hopped off recording a live reaction to another one of hundreds videos, and I thought that was fantastic. This is another video, is, so I immediately want to hop on and keep my promise from there that I was going to react to more of this stuff. The first video of that that I react to isn't even up yet. It's going to be so fun. I'm going to record. Like, he still has a couple. He has a couple more that I want to react to. Let's see. This this one. There's another one that he just dropped, like, three hours ago at the time of recording this one. There's another one. Like, whew. Oh, we got videos. Oh, we got videos. And I'm going to react to a bunch of them. Oh, I'm excited. But regardless, regardless, we start getting hyped and excited. Please, if you want to see the original video without all my pausing and yammering and talking and all that annoying stuff that I happen to do when I open my mouth, please never leave. Well, I'm not looking at it. See, I'm so autopilot. Go check out Hunter's channel. His link will be in the description down below to so his channel and the link to the original video will also be down below. Go check out those. Even if you do want to sit here through all my long talking and pausing and all that good stuff, please go check them out. Fantastic channel. Fantastic editing. Fantastic voice for YouTube. I, I know he gonna be good. I know he gonna be good. If you enjoy my content at all somehow, you'll definitely enjoy his. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me. I need you to do me a favor. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my top 10 strongest characters in Jujutsu Kaisen list. Not wasting any time, so I'm going to list out the stipulations right away. Right. Characters who have time-based restrictions will be realistically judged by that and compare. Oh, he's not. Oh, he's going to put you to low. He either, he either going to put you to. See, the thing is, I already know his opinion on Yuta now. So, like, not too low. Yuta's going to be like five or four i know that for a fact he's gonna put you to five or four because you don't open up with that you don't open up with that talking about oh you care does the time-based restriction you don't do that but if i had to give my own like top 10 not in any particular order i'm saving that for my own video obviously but my top 10 characters are going to be sakuna gojo kenjaku yuta kotsu hikari kenji in jackpot particularly in jackpot kashimo hajime ryu ishigori Maki Zenin. Do we get the thing is, do we count Maharaga individually? Because if so, I gotta throw Maharaga in there. And I think I gotta. I'm just on. Oh, Yuki. See, see, this is why the top 10 is kind of weird. Because I, I kind of need to get into my own opinions. Because, like, there's Yorozu, there's Yuki. Heck, there's even Angel if you really want to get, like, pop it off with it. There are a bunch of characters. But those are, like, general characters that I think are in my top 10, top 15. Notice how characters like Itadori weren't even up there. But regardless, let's see what 100 has to drop with us. Let's see what the rest of the stipulations are. Here do those both below and above them in terms of combat potential. Character restrictions will also be considered for this list as someone's combat potential relies on their versatility as a fighter. Regeneration and matchups will also be heavily considered here as just mm. because someone fares better against a certain opponent does not mean they're stronger than another sorcerer who would also have trouble with that opponent. Tools are considered as well. There are also characters I just won't go in depth with, like, let's be real guys. There are just some choices in this list that don't need explaining. Only going into details with- He about to say Gojo and Sakuna the strongest and end the video. <laughs> the number one and number two section is going to be like one, half, two. It's going to be Gojo, Sakuna, and he's going to cut the video off. If, he, if, he's not, if he says, I'm not elaborating, you know what he means. And I think everyone, if there's one thing, obviously the Gojo and Sakuna fans, we're always fighting but like 
I think no one, like, what's that mean? How does it go? That one meme that, like, like, everyone's talking, and then, like, someone says a unanimous opinion, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, that can be agreed upon. And then they immediately go back to arguing. That's Gojo and Sakuna being number one. No one debates that. I am, I have yet to see anyone realistically debate that. Like, unless they're memeing. And, you know, I'm a memester myself. So, like, I understand a good meme or two, but, like, no one's ever debated that. Everyone knows Gojo and Sakuna's top If We might as well just do top eight lists, because we know one and two. We know one and two always. Like, sure, depending on the person, you'll get Gojo or Sakuna. It really depends. But, like, you know... You know who number one and number two are. No, you don't really need to be questioned on that. Like, we all know. We all know. We all know. It's, it ain't rocket science. It ain't rocket science. But let's see. Let's see what he has to say. Bringing up tools so you know Maki and Toji. I'm assuming, I see a lot of people on lists like equivocate them. Maki and Toji, they are considered equally demonic fighters. I put Toji slightly above because he has inverted spear. That's, they're literally equal in every other way. It's just that Toji has inverted spear. So that's a little bit better than Maki with just soul lib. So that's it. He brought up tools. He brought up regen. So there's going to be a curse or two on here. Who, though? Because, like, outside of Maharaga... And, I mean, well, regen is also RCT, too. So there's that. But, like, when you think about it, there are very... Um, I mean, Sakuna's a curse. King of curses. So I guess there's that. But And I guess Kenjaku, he's also classified as, like, an ancient curse. So there's that, too. But, like... None of the disaster curses are top ten anymore. I'm sorry. They just aren't. They've gotten power cliff. Like, they got power crept out of relevance. Like, whether it be Mahito, Jogo, Konami, Dagon, all of them got power crept. I mean, Kurushi, but I wouldn't even put Kurushi in the top 10. Even with even if I were to put on the heftiest, fattest, and juiciest Yuta blinders on, or like Yuta unblinders, they'd be like, yeah, Yuta's fodder, or something like that. Even if I were to make that kind of argument, I couldn't put Kurushi in top 10. Not in top 10. There are too many other characters. And then, what other curses do we really have? Unless you, like, once again, unless you separate Maharaga. If you separate Maharaga, then Maharaga easily wiggles his way up in there. But if you don't separate Maharaga, if you just put that up as part of Megami's and Sakuna's technique, which I've seen people do, then you can't even have Maharaga up there. And then who's left? That's it. I don't know. I wonder. I wonder if any if any curses curses. Like, not Sakuna or Kenjaku, but any curse curses will really make the top of this list. Like, the top 10. Top 15, you may be able to slide a curse or two in there, but top 10 is kind of strict. Like you saw how I was struggling with it off the top of my head. So could be tragic. New padding. Abilities that may have been forgotten and or certain picks or matchup explanations. Let's be honest now. Do we really need an explanation on both Gojo and Sakuna? We know where they're at. <laughs> yeah, he said it. He said it. You know. <laughs> Everybody knows. Everybody knows. We ain't playing no games with that. We know the truth. We know the truth. Kicking off the list, one of, if not the most powerful cursed spirit in the series, Mahito. Mahito was Mmm. Mmm. I'm already disagreeing. <laughs> I'm already disagreeing. Mahito in the top 10. Can I name 10 characters stronger than Mahito? True for Mahito. True for Mahito relative to 120% Yuji. But like, I think he, anyone, not anyone with a domain, but a lot of people with domain beat Mahito. Like, obviously Sakuna Gojo. There's two. Locked off. Kenny's up there too. Kenny... Well, to be fair, Kenny took advantage of a good situation, so that's why he beat Mahito. But, like, Kenny would beat Mahito, too. Barely still main. GG's. Yuta. Yuta slams Mahito. Able to slam Demon God Itadori. He's gonna slam Mahito. So there's four. I... This is not that common. Ryu. I'd say Ryu with domain beats Mahito. Ryu in most contexts doesn't. Unless you, unless you believe... I know it's a commonly held belief that Mahito can just be beat down. Like, he can straight up get... Like you can just beat Mahito until he's out of cursed energy, and then if you're out of cursed energy, you can't use your cursed technique, you can't regen anymore. Then hypothetically, you could put Ryu up there. Uro, once again, domain. Domain GG. But then again, we don't know what their domains are. So if their domains aren't sure hits, then Mahito would live. But even then, no. Because if his technique is shut down, then he wouldn't be able to like be that pseudo-immortal kind of thing anymore. So he can't just get bullied by both of them in their domains. Yorozu easily, easily, scaling to directly to 15 finger Sakuna and with a domain with perfect spear, pfft, done. <sighs> Yuki, definitely. If Yuki can ignore concepts, she can ignore souls. <laughs> I if Yuki can ignore concepts, she can ignore souls. That's another one. I, I mean, if you include Ghetto as his own individual character, not just like Kenjaku 
minus one intelligence stat. Then there's Ghetto too, who would also just be able to kind of mollywop Mahito. <laughs> don't you dare put Rika separately. She would also body bag Mahito. I, I don't know. I can't necessarily see Mahito in the top 10. Kashimo dogs Mahito. Like, well, specifically if you go with the beatdown thing. Because ironically enough, Kashimo would lose against Mahito surely out of stubbornness. Because he wouldn't activate his curse technique. I assume Kashimo has domain. I think that's what a lot of people assume. But... If he's not going to use it against Maito, Maito's going to win by simply existing. If you go with the idea that he can't be like run down out of cursed energy, you need to hit his soul. So there's that. So Kaji won't technically lose. But like, would, would Hikari, Hikari would technically be able to beat down Mahito only in domain though. Jackpot Hikari wouldn't be able to do anything. But Mahito also wouldn't be able to do anything to Jackpot Hikari. Jackpot Hikari would just be blitzing and bullying him. Then he opens domain and starts pulverizing him even more as in Maito's technique would be shut down he'd lose in there too so there's that <sighs> arguably enough yuji beats mahito now like uh well that depends if you think yuji still has the soul stacking effect like the soul attacking effect even though he doesn't have sakuna anymore then he beats mahito you may be able to argue like just higuruma fight <laughs> Higuruma fight uh, Itadori beats Mahito because of how powerful he is even without curse energy Yuji's grade lo grade one level without curse energy so if you want that Yuji because he still has Sakuna in him so it'll still confirm him the soul tagging technique or you give liberated Yuji the one that's not doesn't have Sakuna anymore then he definitely dog walks all over Toji and Maki bully Mahito so, so liberal like I think I've named 10 characters at this point I wouldn't I personally wouldn't slide Mahito in my, into my top 10 but let's see let's see what 100's got it was the overwhelming versatile and broken curse technique idol transfiguration as Mahito's curse technique grants him the ability to reshape souls doing so allows him to disfigure the body of his victims heal his own wounds transform his appendages into weapons and a limitless variety of other possible transformations Mahito can even go as far as creating clones that can use idol transfiguration on themselves but not on others he is only limited by his imagination this ability of idol transfiguration is practically a one-shot technique as in the universe of Jujutsu Kaisen the shape of the body is dependent on the shape of the soul so if Mahito lands his ability on anybody, he can change the shape of their body into anything he sees fit. For example, Junpei. <laughs> Mahito has also used the Black Flash twice in the span of one fight, showing his phenomenal control of cursed energy and giving him access to understanding the true properties of cursed energy. According to Toto, the difference of the ability to understand cursed energy among those who have used and those who have never used the Black Flash is the difference between heaven and earth as landing a black flash generates a feeling of omnipotence, as if everything revolves around you. This leads to a greatly increased performance in combat, allowing the user to operate at 120% of their maximum potential. When pushed to his limits by Yuji Itadori, his worst matchup, Mahito finally unlocks the instant spirit body of Distorted Killer. This ability greatly enhances Mahito's stats, as he was able to ragdoll Yuji, the same Yuji who was previously ragdolling him. Yuji even goes as far to state that Mahito is a completely different being from his base state. Last but not least, Mahito's domain expansion, the self-embodiment of perfection. To make this quick, this is a domain expansion where Mahito is automatically connected with the souls of anyone inside and is capable of transfiguring them at will. Mahito's control over the technique is so refined that much like Gojo, he is capable of activating it for 0.2 second intervals. The reason why Mahito lands at 10 is because of his general unkillability, one-shot technique, and the ability to negate reverse curse technique, being a huge issue for sorcerers such as Kinji Hakari, Ryu Ishiguri, Kashimo, and many more. The only way to kill Mahito mm. is to have some way of directly attacking the soul, which is an insanely rare trait throughout the series, be able to emit positive curse energy as an offensive ability, or repeatedly kill him until he expends all of his curse energy and can no longer transfigure himself to regenerate. Mahito likely would have become the next Sukuna had it not taken the efforts of Yuji, his worst matchup, in the betrayal of Kenjaku to eliminate him from the series. Next up, we have Maki's. All right, we ain't glazing over that. Now, now I got it. All right, all right, Hunter. Let's have a talk, you and me, to gentlemen, to gentlemen. So. We do agree, then, that if you can just keep executing Mahito to run him out of cursed energy, then you can beat him. Then we should both agree that Ryu Ishigori, Ryu Ishigori, could just literally punch Mahito to death. Like, even instant body of disorder killing Mahito, considering he has no scaling to anyone higher than an extremely fatigued 120% Yuji. 
I think Ryu could beat him to death. I think Kashimo could beat him to death. I think Hikari could beat him to death. Like, legitimately, I think all of them could beat him to death. And plus, at least for Ryu, Domain. Hikari, Domain. And we know for a fact that, realistically, I don't even think Mahito could idol transfigure Jackpot Hikari. Because you gotta remember, Mahito mentions early on, oh, you gotta, you got a you got a hefty amount of cursed energy, my boy. I couldn't I couldn't transfigure you. And even in the fight with Toto, when Toto hops into the bout between him and Itadori, he's like, hmm, I'm at like 40%. The gorilla's at a that sounds so bad. I hate that he says gorilla. But the gorilla's at a hundred percent and Yuji's at about ten percent. Can I even could I even like transfigure his soul if I if I like touch them? And that's Toto, a grade one. Like a grade, a high grade one, don't get me wrong, but a grade one. He's not confident he could one-tap Toto. So we know Idol Transfiguration, while super strong, is a one-tap technique on pretty much anyone Mahito's level. People who are drastically above him, like Ryu, like Jack Potakari, like Kashima, like Uro, like Kurushi even. Like people who are up there, up there above him, they would probably just like bully this man. Like they would... <laughs> If, even if they don't, like, because notably Mahito's, like, kind of dumb sometimes. Like, most of the time, he just tells everybody his technique. Like, because he's so confident. He's like, oh, yeah, BT dubs. I got Idol Transfiguration. You can't harm me because I'm, like, literally indestructible. Ha ha, GG, L. But, like, a lot of characters in modern JJK have domains. And domains neutralize techniques. So, like, the main thing that makes Mahito unkillable is his technique. So, if you can neutralize his technique and... <laughs> Heaven forbid, spam him with sure hit techniques. You, you probably gonna do it. You probably, you probably gonna boop that man right out of existence. If you're opening domain. And I just, I genuinely don't think Idle Transfiguration will work on Jackpot. Because if Nanami has enough energy to resist, if Toto, when getting hit by the 0.2 second domain, has enough energy to chop off his hand. Like if, if the 0.2 second domain, right? Let's say he opens 0.2 second domain on Akari. And Hikari, it, who's in Jackpot, is like, whoa, what is this? And he feels his hand start to mutate. That's all he could get. Because we saw that's all he could get, Mahito could get on Hikari. Then Hikari just, and then he grows the hand back. And then Mahito's burned a bunch of cursed energy on Domain. And Hikari keeps piecing him. So I don't, I don't know. I don't think you can put Mahito in 10. Not, not with so many people having Domains now. Not with Domains kind of just being common. Like, as common as they are, and people just having the ability. Especially since, I don't know, you mentioned it. Like, I, was, I wasn't going to bring it up and say it was a possible win con until you brought it up. But a lot of people could just beat Mahito to death because they have better stats. Kashimo can. Ryu can. Uro can. So many characters can just... Yorozu can. Yuki can. Well, Yuki negates technique, so she's kind of cheating anyway. Like, a lot of people could just beat Mahito to death. If we're going to go with the idea that he can be run out of cursed energy. So, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I respect Nahito at 10, and I even see the reason why, but we know his technique isn't actually a one-shot. We know his domain, even the 0.2 second one, isn't actually a one-shot, and we know characters who can definitely work around losing a limb or two. So I don't know. I don't know. But Maki at 9, that's intriguing. I like that. I like that. I can rock with that. So likely would have become the next Sukuna had it not taken the efforts of Yuji, his worst matchup in the betrayal of Kenjaku to eliminate him from the series. Next up, we have Maki Zenin. After single-handedly decimating the entire Zenin clan and receiving training from the peerless swordsman Daido and the sumo master Mio, Maki has become a true monster, being stated by the narrator to be the god of war reborn. Now honestly, you can put Toji here as well, but I do think Maki is the better of them two despite Toji having more tools. But when it comes down to it, they're similar enough, you know, so it doesn't really matter which one you want to place here. Both. Okay, okay, so he's, he's essentially saying they're interchangeable. Personally, personally, if I'm... If, who do I want in a fight? Like, me... Like, if you were to ask me, who do I want? Like, if I'm drafting a team and I need to have a Heavenly Restriction user, as much as I love Maki, I'm drafting Toji. I'm drafting Toji. Inverted Spear is just too good, bro. Inverted Spear is what allows him to beat Maito. Like, <laughs> well, no. Solid allows him to beat Maito, too. But, like, legitimately, Toji is just Maki, but with a better kit. Because he has more tools. That's it. Like Maki. Maki, if she gets that, because notably we see that inverted spear is broken, it is missing a piece. If she gets like inverted point, like not inverted spear, but a tiny little piece of inverted spear that went missing, then maybe I give it to Maki 100%. Because like 
she about that life. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Right now, I'm drafting Toji. But I understand why he put Maki up here. Because he's right. They're essentially interchangeable stat-wise. They are literally stated to be equals. So everything Toji does, Maki can do. What everything Maki does, Toji can do. It's just that Toji has a better kit. So do what you will. Work. So after my sacrifice, Maki was granted a body of steel, granting her the ability to be as strong as Toji is. The same Toji was able to destroy the special grade curse Dagon and defeat a pre-awakened Satoru Gojo. And even after receiving more training with Mio and Daido, she was able to easily defeat the curse spirit Naoya. This Naoya being able to move and strike at speeds of Mach 3 and above, decimate multiple buildings with ease, and cast one of the strongest domains in the series. Maki was even able to go blow for blow with Sukuna, despite him being... This is a feat that solidly puts her in top 15, top 10. Like, before this interaction, I may have kicked Maki out in my top 10. And you may be wondering why, and it was just like, oh, well, three finger level speed? Eh. But then getting direct, like, direct scaling after Sukuna literally internally said, my physical movement isn't hampered, she's able to directly keep up with and tag 15 finger. That's something that very few characters the only other characters who can directly claim to me on the tag 15 finger are gojo itadori liberated itadori and yorozu no one else has something like that like with stuff like this she speed blitzes real because because sakuna is able to speed blitz real so she she's definitely up there now with this this speed feat plus soul lib and she runs she runs through the verse her and toji run through the verse like crazy i'm glad I did. i'm glad i didn't make some videos i was planning to make because i had characters beating maki but like is it crazy yo and that may be a little bit crazy to say but like wait if you if, if you say that sakuna is like trying to go all out here and not trying to get hit maki can beat yuda Toji could beat Yuta. Because all they need to do is soul lib his head. Soul lib his head. Soul lib an arm. Soul lib anything. Soul lib his limbs. Like, say Maki wants to keep him alive for some reason. Well, not for some reason. She loves the man. But, like, Toji would have no reason. If Toji would really wanted to, pulls up, boom. Because direct scaling to 15 finger Maguna, Yuta ain't got that. Ryu ain't got that. Like, Maki could be way higher. With this feat alone, direct scaling the 15 finger when his physical movements aren't hampered. And note, they both go faster after this. They both even increase their speed. So, like, kind of crazy. Durin Egg plus that high of a speed, kind of bonkers. Let's see. We can do the Megami's interference. Maki also has access to one of the most powerful cursed. Wait. He was even able to go blow for blow with Sukuna. Despite him being weakened due to Megami's interference. Note, only his cursed energy output was weakened. His physical movements were not. Every single physical speed feat we've seen Sukuna perform in 15 Finger can be performed by Maki since she's relative to him when he has completely unhampered physical movement. It's only his cursed techniques that have lower output. So, that's why she's crazy. Maki and Toji are now up there. Where they, in my opinion, they weren't before. With that feat alone, they're now up there. Their best speed stuff was like three finger Sukuna stuff beforehand. Like, that was it. But now, they got direct skill on the 15 finger. That's bonkers. But let's see. Maki also has access to one of the most powerful cursed tools in the series bestowed to her by her sister, the Split Soul Katana. This tool allows Maki to negate both durability. Sorry, it is, a split, it is the Split Soul Katana. I always call it Soul Liberation Blade. I don't even know where I got that from. I think maybe it was just like a TCB translation. I have no idea where I got Soul Liberation Blade, but I always say that. It's literally, I, it's a mistake in so many of my videos. I always say it. it is just Soul Split Katana. I have no idea why I call it Soul Liberation Blade, but I do, and I will probably continue to call it that. So correct me if you need to, but that's what I call it. And regeneration. Maki is also a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat, being able to go blow for blow with the likes of Naoya Zenin and 15 Finger Sakuda. She's also able to wield all kinds of weapons and just overall a beast. One of the most overwhelming characters when it comes to anything physical, and as previously stated, a true god of war. Next. Oh no, do I have to... Do I have to mute this? Oh, I hope I don't have to mute this. Oh no. I'll see, but I think I may have to mute this part. 
Because that's, that's, that's the king. That's the king of pop in the background. I can't play that. I don't think I can play that. I think YouTube will flag me for that. He was able to post it, so I should be able to. But no, no, nah, I'm going to have to mute this whole section, aren't I? Hmm. I'll see. I'll, I'll, I won't see. So I, I've, it'll depend. Editing me is going to be the one to decide it, but I don't know. My editing software, it takes forever to export videos and I'm trying to bulk record today. So this is my fourth video of the day. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a whole bunch out if you know what I'm saying. So I think just for the simplicity of exporting, I'm probably going to mute this gonna be this section because i'm not i'm not i'm not playing with youtube 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 will not play with me i'm not gonna play with youtube we ain't gonna risk it so i'll i'll get the general gist of his argument and i'll repeat it i was about to say i'll voice his argument as he says it but i won't do that but i'm probably gonna mute this because i'm scared <sighs> but let's see yeah and uh, one thing i will admit i'm not gonna tell you where i put maki but just think of it during egg plus regeneration negation, plus 15 finger Sukuna levels of speed. Where do you think that puts Maki? Where do you, what do you think that allows Maki to be? Let me know. Let me know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna play the game. Like, I'm thinking, I, I have to, like, took time to think about it. Nah, because this video is going to be long as all get out too. Well, we've already been here for like 20 minutes. And I'm only on number eight. <laughs> I'm not risking that. I'm not, that it's going to take like three hours for this to export as it is. So like, I'm not going to, because that happened to me before. I forget whose video it was. I had reacted to someone's video and I had exported it and I had gotten through. The export took like four hours, four hours. Because it's, a, it's a, obviously, it was like an hour and 30 minute video. But they had, it was their intro. It was their intro had a, um, some song from it and i specifically remember i was like what's what's wrong because like youtube was telling me oh yeah your video has been claimed and i was like what, what did i do because you know like i i use music that doesn't get claimed sometimes sometimes people can't even hear the music that's how low i keep the music out of fear of it still getting claimed because occasionally some of my music has still gotten claimed even though it's not it's like it's unclaimable music as far as i know so when it happened i was like what happened but then it was their one minute intro it was like it had a copyright song it was like do you want to post the video anyway and i was like no because i'm gonna get my video straight <laughs> i wasn't gonna do that so i literally had to delete the whole thing go back to the main thing cut out that one minute and wait another four hours i had to wait a whole other four hours for it to export again just without that one sound clip so considering how long this video is gonna be i ain't doing all that this section is gonna be muted it's gonna be muted hopefully there aren't multiple sections like this but i ain't gonna risk it i'm not gonna risk the biscuit but let's see I will, once again, like I said, I will listen to the whole thing straight through. I'll summarize my own thoughts on it. Though, admittedly, I do have Fakari in my top 10, too. So, like, it's not... I don't think I'll, he's going to say anything I'm going to disagree with that's going to have you be like, wait, something's wrong here. I highly doubt that. Okay. So, that whole section's over. He said everything I agree with. He just explained Fakari's technique, why he's up there, all that. Stats against Charles, stats against uh, Itadori, stats against Kajimo, all the good stuff, all the good stuff. Uh, the only thing he said that I kind of disagree with is that he thinks... Well, I'm not, I'm not going to rewind because I don't have to edit more. And I don't want to edit more. I'm sorry. <laughs> Revealing. Pencil's lazy. Pencil's not like to edit more. But um, the one thing I do disagree with, he said Hakari would be a hard... Well, no. Maito's a hard counter to Hakari. And kind of. Kind of. I see what he means there. But, like, not really. I don't... I, I don't like, I, I'll do that video, too. I'll do Hakari versus Maito. Well, I think Hakari kind of just slams that man. Like... <laughs> the stats disparity is the main thing that goes into that but we'll, we'll talk about that in its own video akari being top 10 he's my top 10 too i'm not even gonna not even gonna knock the hustle there and i do think more times than not i'm spoiling so many so many versus battles i want to do but um more times than not i think maki beats akari i genuinely think like maki even has solid chances against jackpot akari just with her like speed scaling and duradenic like Especially if Soul Lib works in the way we think Soul Lib works, where like you can't even RCT regen from it, because when Monkey cuts off your arm, you're like the soul part of your arm is gone too. Then she's the she is legitimately the worst matchup for Akari in the entire series, outside of like the literal deities. So W W W Hikari in top ten. Her versus Maito though. Uh, I'm leaning, I'm leaning heavily in Akari's favor, but let's see who he has up next. Suguru Ghetto. 
Ghetto was one of the four sorcerers that had been given the title of Special Grade. Despite him holding nothing but L's on his screen time and having a very early exit from the series, he still belongs in this spot. We'll Interesting. Suguru Ghetto. Above? Above Akari. That's the thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, get, yeah. Once again, it's just the Maki. Maki's the only one. I still think, I think Maki and Toji would still dog on adult ghetto with the, with the 15 finger stuff. That's just, it's just too, 15, 15 finger speed has been established to be way too high for ghetto to do anything to Maki. Like, he would try to summon a cursed spirit and then she would just, <laughs> dumb piece, gone, gone. And like, there's nothing he can really do about that. Just because of the, the massive speed disparity here. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. But Ghetto being top 10, I can definitely see it. Curse Spirit Manipulation is too good. And being able to beat Volume Zero Yuta, you know, unlimited, boundless curse energy, fully manifested Rika, unlimited, like that, that's too good. Yeah, so being able to be relative to that and even being able to beat that if he wasn't, like, mentally nerfed and splitting his forces. Yeah, Ghetto being, ghetto being up there makes absolute perfect sense. There's, not, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But let's see what he has to say about it. I think one of the best abilities in the series, that being Cursed Spirit Manipulation, Suguru is able to collect Cursed Spirits and use them to assist him in battle. And it's not hey, like hey, the hey, 10 hey, Shadows where he oh. can only use one. <laughs> what was I say, hey, that's not Cursed Spirit Manipulation. <laughs> that's not even Ghetto. <laughs> don't, you, don't you pull that out. Don't you pull that out. Put that away. Put that away. That's not Ghetto. <laughs> but you brought that's a 10 Shadows. One at once. He can use all of these cursed spirits at once if he really wanted to. And his collection of cursed spirits was as wide as possible with a different variety of uses in battle. He can use these spirits to fight alongside him, amp up his stats, take attacks for him, and again, all of these at once. And it's not like Ghetto over. That's the thing about Ghetto. We, like, I'll even admit, Kenny doesn't use cursed spirit manipulation to its full potential either. Like, Specifically, I mean, I kind of get why they don't, because sure, thousands of cursed spirits is nice, but if you keep throwing fodder at your opponent and they start running through your fodder, the thousands of cursed spirits isn't that impressive anymore. But, big booty butt cheeks. The thing is, like, they only use, like, one or two. Kenny only uses, like, one or two. The best example we've seen of cursed spirit manipulation, at least in my opinion, out of the entire series in terms of its usage, is Kenny versus Itadori where he kept just wombo calling him. The moment one effect finished, he was getting hit by another effect, getting hit by another effect, getting hit by another effect, getting hit by another effect. You gotta be like, top of the line like that. Like in his most climactic battle, Ghetto uses his ability horribly. Like who who does he even summon? He summons a whole bunch of fodder. They all get Shine and they all Shine. And then that's it. He doesn't use Curse Spear Manipulation again, even though the one thing that allowed you to just Shine, all of them, is gone like he'll get a little season break so all he needed to do was like keep spamming yuda and then that would have been fine throw a special grade or two at um well he didn't have many special grades but still throw a special grade at rika have her deal with that like there were ways for ghetto to win that fight but you can clearly tell by how he approaches the battle he's not all his heart isn't in it for one he obviously doesn't know, really want to execute sorcerers he doesn't even like despite how easy it would have been for him to do it he doesn't even execute maki panda and inumaki he specifically doesn't do that he even mentions to gojo like oh that was part of your plan huh you knew i wouldn't really execute them and gojo was like i mean i have faith in them so that yeah obviously ghetto was not definitely he definitely wasn't down to execute the kids or anything like that because they're sorcerers and he loves sorcerers and i don't and even though he wanted rika really badly so he could do his plan i think ghetto still still he cared about the Care about the kids too much like i i don't think he had his heart in that battle and we know when you don't have your heart in a fight in jjk if your mentality is even just a little bit off you can be massively weaker than your full potential and we know he wasn't using his curse technique optimally in that fight either so ghetto being up here especially special grade ghetto yeah definitely maybe maybe not grade one ghetto i think grade one ghetto is a little underwhelming expect like even more underwhelming than the special grade self but Full power ghetto, full power JDK zero ghetto. Yeah, him being up here makes sense. Look what Kenjaku is doing with his body alone. Like, it's crazy. So let's see. Really relied on these cursed spears because he was phenomenal at hand-to-hand -hand combat, as he was easily able to overwhelm. 
Like, look at bro. Bro pulled out Playful Cloud and got to work. When realistically, he should have been dropping Cursed Spirits left and right. Now, bro is literally running the 1v2 willingly. One of the two... Literally, him and Kenjako are like the... Well, and Yuki. And Droof. Like, one of five characters in the entire series that never has to actually deal with the proper 1v2 that Yuta always brings with Rika. And yet he avoids doing it. He's actually, like, treating it like a fair 1v2. Like, come on, bro. You know bro was holding back that uh, holding back that special sauce. You know that. We all know that. Come on now. Let's see. Panda and match and enrage Yuta and Rika at the same time when using the special great curse tool, the Playful Cloud. And although Ghetto lost to an inexperienced Yuta, it's been stated that Ghetto would have won if he had been at his full power and didn't expend all of his curses to fight the rest of Tokyo Jujutsu High. I mean, when it comes down to it, the fact that Ghetto was able to fight Yuta, Okotsu, and combat all of Jujutsu with just his curses alone says a lot about his potential and power as a sorcerer. He belongs in this spot. Number six, Euro. Do I have to censor it? Oh, do I have to censor it? No, I don't have to censor it. But yeah, get out W arguments for Ghetto, right? Yuta, Rika, special grade duo, arguably. Arguably top four, like the fourth strongest character in the series. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and while I will admit Yuta was inexperienced at that point, I'd say that Yuta is still a better Yuta than modern Yuta. Five minutes is crazy. <laughs> Five minutes is crazy. And plus, modern Yuta only gets, like, two extra techniques, which is sky manipulation, which is super broken, don't get me wrong. But, like, sky manipulation for five minutes, sky manipulation for five minutes is nowhere near as broken as it could be. If you gave JJK zero Yuta sky manipulation, he would have gone bonkers. You gave JJK zero Yuta Drew's technique, he would have gone bonkers. So, like, yeah, Ghetto definitely up there. Obviously, he has a statement from Kenjaku that he would have won. Obviously, he was mentally nervous. Like, there's so much that w went against Ghetto's favor that it's really rough for Brody. But he's definitely, like, a solid. He's a solid top 10. I mean, it's mainly because the Cursed Spirit, Cursed Spirit Manipulation is such a good technique with the quantity that they have. If you just had, like, one or two curses with you, Cursed Spirit Manipulation is cheeks, even if they're, like, special grades against certain characters. But the fact that they have hundreds thousands of them that's what makes that technique so good in the right hands so i can't like even me i can't get ghetto out of 10 like i have char characters who i think are have better stats than ghetto that are like physically stronger and physically faster but just due to how crazy chris spear manipulation is it's gotta be it's gotta be top he's gotta be top 10 let's see Yorozu. obviously the 15 finger stuff that's what's gonna get her up here ozu Yorozu was one of the most powerful sorcerers in the heian era the golden age of jujutsu after incarnating into the modern era, Yorozu was able to give Sukuna a very competitive fight, where she was able to land several direct blows and stand against the Ten Shadows technique. She ultimately resorted to using her own domain, but she failed to force Sukuna into using his own. She also failed in making Sukuna use Cleave and Dismantle, but she was able to force him into using Maharaga. This alone is more impressive than Ryu's performance against him. The same Ryu who- He grabs the my boy. Oh, Ryu. Why, bro? Why did you have to become a victim, bro? You should have just ran. You should have ran, Ryu. You should have ran. Ugh. It still hurts me this day. It still hurts me. I got. I gotta drink water. Drink water. I'm drinking water, and you should drink water too. Stay hydrated. But it still hurts my heart that Ryu had to be the one. Like, especially considering we had another jobber. Like, we had another jobber. We had another jobber. In Earl, right there. I know. It makes perfect sense why Earl didn't pull up. She was literally, uh, Oh, the King of Curses. His meat is so mighty. I can feel it all the way from here. If he slaps on my forehead, I'm gonna die. Like, like I get it. I get it. I understand. But, like, Come on now, bro. Ryu, he could have been so cool in the final fight, bro. And I know you're gonna be like, oh, Pencil. He's literally just big energy blast. I know, but look at the Pompadour. Like, come on now, man. Do you, who do you want to see more in the final fight against Kenjaku and Sakuna? Inumaki or Ryu? Who do you want to see more in the like? Who do you want to see more in the final fight against Kenjaku and Sakuna? Do you want Noritoshi Kamo or Ryu? Like, come on now, bro. Like. I know I was gonna say panda, but I know there are actual panda fans out there. 
<laughs> like, I always forget they're actually, I don't know. I never got the NFL behind Panda. Like, never did. Never did. But then again, like, I, don't, I, I think Panda's type of character has just never appealed to me personally. So, like, <laughs> that's not Panda's fault. It's just, like, it's my own tastes and preferences that keep me from really enjoying the character. But darn it, Ryu. Darn it, my boy. I wish you were still around. You're good for scaling, though. I appreciate you. You made not mock you, like, pretty inarguably top three. <laughs> So you, so you did good work, Ryu. You did good work, but darn it. Performed very well in the Sendai Colony Battle Royale and forced Yuta into manifesting Rika. With Yorozu's only opponent being Sukuna, I'm sure this was for good narrative reason, as not many would be able to stand against her. With Yorozu's construction ability, she was able to create something from nothing, primarily using it to create liquid metal as her weapon of choice, as it has changeable value, easily manipulated, and stable physical properties when being manipulated by cursed energy giving Yorozu immense versatility and power. And when she needs to go all out, she creates her insect armor which greatly enhances her strength, speed, and durability. And last but not least, something akin to a maximum technique is Yorozu's perfect spear. To keep things brief and not confusing about this, a true spear has no contact area and generates infinite pressure, so this makes it untouchable. In the end, it's just another one-shot ability. She has access to a domain expansion but it's truly nothing special. It just allows her to make her true spear and everything else a sure hit. Yorozu's spot is well deserved. That is cracked though. Like, like I will admit, he said it's nothing special, but like, and to be fair, Sakuna would have just opened domain back. Like if he if he actually started getting hit by the sure hit or felt himself being annihilated, he'd hit the Ryoki Tenkai. But we never actually get to see what would happen to something that would be affected by Perfect Spear. If Yorozu fought anyone else in open domain, they'd probably instantaneously perish. Because if the true spear has, like, a perfect hitbox to where it's, like, just infinite pressure, anyone would kind of just... Like, that really is... He said it's just another one-shot technique, but it really is just a one-shot technique. Like, I don't think anyone survives that. Like, except for, you know, Gojo, who cheats, and Sakuna, who cheats. Like, I don't, I think that could, like, literally take out, like, Kenjaku or something. Because how is Kenjaku meant to fight Infinity? Like, unless he, once again, unless Kenjaku counter opens domain to negate the sure hit, anyone who gets caught in that domain and she actually activates the sure hit, I don't know why her and Joko both don't immediately do that. That would have been it. That would have been it. That would have been a GG. That's, that, that domain is kind of crazy. Like, it's not... I wouldn't put it in top five domains, but like it's up there. It's up there. It's kind of it's kind of cracked. Don't sleep. Don't sleep on that domain. But let's see. And most would place her at four. Number five is the cursed child Yuta Kotsu. In terms of special grade sorcerers, Yuta. He got Yuta at number five. Who he got above Yuta? Who he got? Okay, who who we got over so far? Uh... We got Mahito. Hakari, Maki, Yorozu. We literally just went. Maki, Hakari, Yorozu. Maki, Hakari, Yorozu. Oh, Lord. Who is it? Maki, Hakari, Yorozu. My brain is lagging. I feel so slow. I feel so stupid. What is it? Maki, Hakari, Yorozu, Mahito. And then who was it? Maki, Hakari, Yorozu, Mahito. Oh, Suguru. Oh, Lord. I'm so stupid. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I should have just checked. I legit should have just checked. What's wrong with me? But yeah, solid list. Solid list. There's some characters that I feel like could be in here, but we'll, we'll get to that at the end. Once, once I see his full roster, that's when I'll be like, ah, you could throw... X in here. The only character I can see being above Yuta is like Kashima. Like having Yuta at five, and he already covered Akari, so it's not gonna be Akari. It's not gonna be Itadori. It's not gonna be Ryu. I mean, I don't think he's already been <laughs> we've already started Wombo Combo slandering Ryu, so I, I I don't think I don't think it's gonna be Ryu either. So like who's above Yuta? I'm gonna I I think it has to be like Kashima, right? That's the only one. That's the only other guy I could see. Because there's the oh it's either going to be, it, it could be, there are three options. It's either going to be Kashimo, Angel, or Takuma. It's those three that are, like, on the table, I think. Because I, I, I'm not sure about anyone else at this point. Unless he, once again, unless he counts Maharaga as separate. If he counts Maharaga as separate, then Maharaga. 
because Maharaga, Maharaga is the worst matchup for you in the entire series. I'd say even worse than like Gojo, <laughs> Gojo and Sakuda, ironically. Yeah. Worse than Gojo, worse than Sakuda, worse than Kenjaku. Maharaga is the worst matchup for you. But then again, Maharaga is the worst matchup for everybody, except for the deities. Like that's, that's just how Maharaga is. But specifically like matchup wise, the adaptation technique is way too good. Even if you'd have copied it, Maharaga could stall out Yuta for the five minutes and then boop, Mimicry goes away and then Maharaga executes him. But we'll talk, let's see. Let's see what he has to say about the blessed child, Yuta Okutsu. In terms of special grade sorcerers, Yuta's the new kid on the block, but this certain- He didn't mention Yuki. Yuki may be above Yuta. Yuki's up there too. I don't think he mentioned- Yeah, he didn't mention Yuki yet, so there you go. There's that. Because we know the top two, and we know Kenny's got to be here. Unless he unless he folds Kenny into Suguru, which I don't think he will, Kenny's got to be on here. So it's got to be- It's either got to be Yuki, Takaba, Angel, or Kashimo above Yuta, but let's see. He does not make him the weakest. As in Yuta's very first fight, he was able to defeat a weakened Suguru Geto, another special grade sorcerer. In my opinion, I give the special grade sorcerer title a lot of weight because it's narratively distributed very rarely for a reason. What puts Yuta at number 5 is his massive amounts of power, with it being stated that it feels as if his cursed energy is bottomless, being able to physically overwhelm even Yuji Itadori in his base. When Yuta needs to go all out, he can fully manifest Rika, which would be different against someone like Yorozu because in the Sendai colony he had multiple opponents, but a current Yuta and Rika working together to jump somebody, I feel as if it would be much more impressive than what we've seen before. And you gotta remember, Yuta would also have tons of cursed abilities he can use while- Uh, I don't know if this is gonna sound crazy, and but I already did. I had my Yuta defense cap on earlier today. I'm I'm not putting the thing on. I think you're always a beats Yuta. Bug armor, especially. I know that sounds crazy, but like bug armor, boop. Sp true spear, boop. Dome, boop. Like once again, I know Yuta fans. He was holding back his stats in Sendai. Yeah. I believe when I see it. But regardless, with well, that being the case, Ryu got perception blitz. Not not speed blitz, not slightly blitz. Perception blitz by Sakuna, dog. Guess who didn't? Yoroza. Guess who's relative to Ryu? Yuda. If Yuda couldn't perception blitz Ryu, Yoroza's going to perception blitz him. Ah, that's how I see it. But I understand putting you to higher still because of because of the narrative heft behind you to I understand putting you to higher. Working together with Rika, different curse tools. He just has so many answers and options available for use. He also has access to a domain expansion and reverse curse technique. My primary reason for placing Yuta at five instead of four is because of his five minute time limit. It's too Yeah, well I knew he was gonna bring that up. Because that is I'm sorry, like you and I, people were trying to justify it, like, oh, but he managed to defeat the Sendai trio in five minutes. Okay. Yes. Against anyone else. <laughs> like, I, this is, this is a hot take, and it's going to be its own video. I keep dropping things that I plan to make own videos on. But I think if Yuta were to come out in Sendai and it was just him versus Ryu, he would have lost that fight because he wouldn't have sky manipulation. So he would—he literally wouldn't be able to beat Ryu. Like he would, Ryu would do him and Rika like Yuta did um, Suguru, and like they would be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Ryu would last the five minutes, and then pff, Rika would be gone. He'd knock her away, and then he'd bully Yuta to death. You did need sky manipulation to beat Ryu, and even then, uh, that'd still be rough because Ryu would know, like. Yuta was lucky enough that Uro showed him how to use Sky Manipulation and then also hit Ryu with a special attack and Ryu burned a whole bunch of CE on Domain. I wouldn't... I mean, that's a that's a bold claim. I'm, I'll think about it more and I'll make my own video talking about it. But it's a, it's a thought I've had in my head for a while now. But I think Ryu would win, even now. Which is crazy. I know I shouldn't think that, but it's coming to mind. It's coming to mind, but we'll see.
unreliable for battles against other top tiers as yeah. i even think that hakari would genuinely beat yuta when he's on a roll because hakari can instantly replenish his curse energy and his jackpot whereas that's not the same for yuta however yuta deserves his place above hakari because he can decimate all curse spirits with ease can answer almost everybody in the series Music. and can win against them without too many conditions except for the five minutes but again i just don't think it's practical against top tiers like sakuna kenjaku Yuki. Base Yuta is what does Yuta the dirtiest. Because I'd say Rozu slams base Yuta. I'd say Yuki slams base Yuta. I'd say Yorozu, Yuki, Ryu, Uro, Jack. Well, Jack Panakar is cheating. So I like Jack Panakar. We'll, we'll leave him off. But Maki, Toji. Who's that character? I know I, I just had you on the brain. I just had you on the brain. Who were you? I forget. But a, a bunch of characters slam base Yuta. Base Yuta is his word. If you take that ring away, <laughs> like, unless you literally stand there. That's the, that's another big thing that we really talk about in Yuta matchups. We always pretend that his opponent would stand there and let him put on the ring. Yuta was lucky enough to be, a, to be thrown far away from Uro and Ryu when he put his ring on. He then had to reapproach them. But like in a close quarters 1v1 fight, he's not going to be allowed to put that stupid ring. Well, not stupid. It's a nice ring. But it, it is very, very clean. It's a nice little wedding band. But still, he's not going to be allowed to put that ring on by most people. So he never, like, full power Yuta is something that we always grant him. Like it's almost guaranteed to happen. But like, to, like, unless he does something with Unmanifested Rika to make sure Unmanifested Rika holds people off. Like, most people, if they're pressing Yuta, he's not going to be able to, like, hold on, let me reach in my back pocket and, ah, like, like, he won't be able to do that. So, full power Yuta is not only something that's only around for five minutes, something that a lot of high tiers could straight stall him out of, like, it's cowardly, but a lot of people could just run, run away for five minutes, and then you don't have to deal with Manifested Rika, but if not that, they could just stop him from doing it. Like, unless Rika, or unless Yuta pulls up to the fight with Kenjaku, ring slipped on, Kenny's not going to let him do that. Kenny, pro well, if Kenny doesn't even know, he's going to see, oh, he's bringing out a, a ring? I don't know what that does. Let's not find out. And he would immediately just start spamming Yuta with curses in order to make sure that he can't do that. Someone would get up, like, Kashimo would be like, why are you, why are you doing that? I have no idea. And he would just keep punching Yuta and keep bolting. Like, there is a bunch of characters who just wouldn't let Yuta put it on, and then he never gets full power. So, Yuta's in a really rough spot. But let's see. Yorozu, etc. Now, on to number four, that being Yuki Sukuma. These last four... Mm, so there are a couple beefy exceptions on this list. Because I'm, I'm going to take a shot at his top three. I'm going to take a shot at his top three. Kenjaku, Gojo, Sukuna. Boom. Boom! Top three. What is that? That's from a Sonic game. Boom! I forget what Sonic game that's from. But, and it's not, I don't think it's Sonic Boom. I don't, is that from Colors? I, 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 it's not from Sonic Boom. I know I said boom, but it's not from Sonic Boom. But, Kashimo not being on the list is kind of crazy. Kashimo, but not, Mahito, but not Kashimo. Kind of wild. Um, shoot. Ryu, but not Kash Ryu, Mahito, but not Ryu's kinda wild. Or oh, I can kinda get leaving out top ten. I can kinda understand her. Angel not being top ten? Kinda wild. Fifteen finger stuff is crazy, y'all. Fifteen finger stuff is super rare. Super rare. This is 221. This is 221 included, I'm pretty sure. Six yeah, this video is six days old at the time of recording, so 221's included. So liberated Yuji? I and <laughs> Uh, I'm saying this like it's such a common phrase. Liberated Yuji is Yuji post Sukuna leaving his body and going to Megami. Liberated Yuji, I, once again, it's the it's vague if he has the soul hitting stuff, but if he still has the soul sitting stuff, he would also beat Mahito. He's definitely way stronger. Tagging 15 finger is wild. Him being left off the list, kind of crazy. If you're going to put Mahito on. Like, there's some I would swap out. Mahito's one I would definitely swap out for a couple different options. At least in my opinion. I, I would swap out Mahito just a little. Because I, I get it. I get it. Mahito's hacks are really, really good. But against a lot of the top 10, not only do, does he lack the stats to really hold up against a lot of the top 10, but also the top 10 have, like, so much cursed energy and so much soul endurance, most likely, that they just wouldn't get one tap. 
and his domain wouldn't one tap them either. So like, I don't know, I don't know. It's interesting though. Yuki, Yuki above Yuta though. That's a take out Rockwood. That's a take out Rockwood. I think Yuki slams. Well, not slams. She would still have a rough fight. But I think Yuki also beats Yuna pretty badly. Because, all, like, I know it sounds wild, but I think if Yuki uses her blue lock kick, her blue lock direct shot on Rika, she's gone. And then Yuta doesn't have his curse technique anymore. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Like, it sounds like a crazy win con, but, like, am I really wrong? Like, think about it. Do you think Rika's... If Rika can take damage from and get smacked around by Ryu, what do you think... Do you think if Kenjaku got his arms slammed through and snapped apart by a punch, what do you think is going to happen to Yuta when he gets hit by that blue lock shot? What happens when he finds out that Yuki Sakumo really is an egotist? Like, what, what, what is he really going to do? I think he's going to get packed up. That's all I'm saying. So I can definitely see Yuki above you then. That's a take I'm wrong with. You know what I'm saying? But let's see. Boss will be fairly easy to explain. Yuki is a special grade sorcerer with tons of experience in the extremely overpowered ability of virtual mass manipulation called oh, Bombaye. This ability has displayed the strength to easily decimate cursed spirits and go straight through Kenjaku's defense. When it comes to both power and skill combined, Yuki is simply unparalleled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And if Kenjaku couldn't handle her in this area, nobody can. Yuki also has access to mid and long- And this is true because in external materials, I think, I forget if Sukuna is included in that too. Oh, I think it's Toji, Kenjaku, and Gojo are all like established to be the peak of like hand-to-hand -hand combat within the verse those that trio is what's like yeah they oh and maki too maki's up there as well like they're the if you want like real genuine fisticuffs in terms of skill they're the ones that are up there so yuki being able to just <laughs> right through kenjaku is crazy for her hand-to-hand -hand. range attacks to reduce your shikigami garuda since she can also use her ability through garuda and impart the virtual mass onto it using garuda as a projectile a weapon and without the ability, Garuda can even assist her by restraining her opponents. Her durability is nothing to scoff at either, as she was able to tink a direct mini Uzumaki to the face from Kenjaku, and also able to tink a direct blow from Kenjaku's burialist domain, the Wound Perfusion. Yuki also has a domain expansion, anti-domain, and reverse curse technique to heal herself. And finally, if on the brink of death, she can self-destruct by imparting so much mass onto herself, it will create a black hole with an insane area of effect guaranteed to hit the opponent unless countered. The reason why Yuki lands so high is because she does not have any conditions in battle. Being able to stop most but That's the big thing. And it's and, and here's the thing, right? The Yuta fan in me is about to come out. I think it was genuinely unfair that he got nerfed. I think that was mean. That was un that was unnecessary. That was so unnecessary. There was no need to nerf Yuta that hard. Five minutes really when every other special grade has no limitations like i get it it's because yuda could copy all of the special grade techniques pencil that's why he had to be nerfed it's not really a nerf pencil you're just looking at it too hard i know but still five minutes five minutes dog like come on you couldn't give him a little bit more there's a teeny tiny bit more come on Brody, like, really? I don't know. Five minutes is tragic, New Patty. Like, come on now. So, yeah, Yuki, who gets unlimited access to Bombaye. Yuta tries to fight her in base once, loses both of his arms. Yuta tries to slide the ring on. She just hits him again. Yuta tries to open domain. She symbol domains, has Yuta waste a whole bunch of his technique. Then bada bing, bada boom, immediately hits him with a domain of her own. Slam. Yeah, I, that Yuki's got that blow her and give a very difficult battle to Kenjaku due to matching up with him very well. And in a hypothetical matchup against Yuta, the 5 minutes is not practical against Yuki because let's be real, Yuta and Rika aren't putting down Yuki and Garuda in 5 minutes. Yeah. Kenjaku has written off Yuta Kotsu before whereas with Yuki Sukumo, he questioned himself asking that it feels possible to hunt this wild beast. The same Kenjaku has practiced Jujutsu for over a thousand, thousand years. years. Yuki also can reject concept manipulation due to her ability, which is a factor that allows her to match up much better against more powerful opponents such as Kenjaku. 
reducing most of his moveset. What needs to be established with this fight is that, although Yuki lost on her first appearance, her opponent was Kenjaku, and nobody below her on this list would perform better than her against him. Everyone would probably perform worse. Because the because the biggest thing is, is really that Yuki is the perfect counter to Cursed Spirit manipulation. Because you simply cannot stop her. Like, with the unlimited mass, just throwing Cursed Spirits at her doesn't work. And even things that manipulate concepts, like the gigantic elephant curse that he had, just get necked because of the mass that she applies to herself. So they're, like, the perfect counter. No one else except for, nah, not even Maharaga. Like, when you really think about it, Maharaga is not the best counter to Kenjaku or Geta. Because the variety is crazy. Like, you just keep spamming you hit maharaga with one big attack and then as it's trying to recover you hit him with another big attack and another big attack you could wear maharaga down but with yuki it's just like and like she would just tear through them all so yeah everyone else pretty much in the entire series except for the deities of course would also just do worse against kenny because kenny's just a monster let's see that is certain number three is kenjaku and this is where the list starts to wrap up very quickly yeah. kenjaku does not need much explaining as kenjaku is able to overcome the combined efforts of yuki choso and tengen and this is while they had prep time and knowledge of his abilities whereas kenjaku was unaware of yuki's abilities until she landed an attack on him Kenjaku was also nerfed in this battle because he couldn't use his special grade cursed spirits against Yuki who has concept negation. The honest truth is Kenjaku compared to every other character below him, it's two different levels, especially when Kenjaku is at full power. To briefly go into his abilities, he holds Tsurugato's body, has his cursed spirit manipulation and immense physical prowess. But Kenjaku has more than Geto's technique, as he also holds the technique of Yuji's mother, Kaori Itadori, the anti-gravity system. Yep. This is a cursed technique that negates gravity when used, but Kenjaku primarily uses it. Actually, it's not anti- I think it- I don't think it- oh wait, wow, is it anti-gravity system? Jeez. Cursed technique reversal of this ability, allowing him to intensify the gravitational pull oh. around him. Kenjaku was stated- That's great, yo! I- I'm gonna say it. Kenny has more. I didn't even realize. See, this is uh, that goes to show you how illiterate I am. I didn't even realize that. So every time Kenny used her technique, he was using RCT to fuel it. So Kenny was burning even more cursed energy. Was just fine. Yuta definitely doesn't have anywhere near as much cursed energy as Kenjaku. Kenjaku's different, dog. What? He was using RCT to heal, opened a burialist domain, and was popping RCT on techniques left and right, and was spamming Curse Spear Manipulate. Bro, is snapped. What? His reserves are buku bonkers, bro. What? That is crazy. Wow. To be the best hand-to-hand -hand combat in the series, also the second best barrier user, being refined enough to access a burialist domain expansion, Kenjaku's only weakness would be his arrogance going into very long monologues when in battle due to usually overwhelming his opponents with almost no difficulty. But when you're as powerful as he is, can you really blame him? Got a good reason. With Giga using Ryu, one of the most powerful characters in the series, even strong enough to give Yuta a high difficulty fight to get Perception Blitz and- The Yuta fans ain't gonna like that, bro. You shouldn't have said that, bro. You should have just said he gave Yuta a good fight. You shouldn't have said high diff. Yuta fans will not like to hear that, bro. Yuta fans are not gonna like that. Yuta, ugh. I hear, I hear them now. Oh, their keyboards. Oh, their keyboards. They can be heard. Oh, oh, they're tapping them. Oh, they're tapping the keyboards. Oh, no. They're coming. Oh, no. The Yuta fans. Oh, they're in the walls. They're in the walls. <laughs> Unshotted by Sukuna, there was a very clear message that he was attempting to communicate to the audience. Yeah. Sukuna is a true monster. Sukuna being a master of Jujutsu wielding cleave, dismantle, and mastering the Ten Shadows technique, even being able to summon the Maharaga at will. He simply cannot be defeated by anybody but Gojo. Sukuna was even able to clash with Gojo, albeit brief. And Gojo once even stating that a full power Sukuna would be difficult for him to defeat, although he'd still win. After crushing everything in the Heian era to a point where he was revered as a god, and decimating high tiers such as Jogo, Maharaga, Ryu, and Yorozu, Sukuna now believes that Gojo's the only man who can possibly make him feel anything besides the will to destroy everything in his path. Sukuna's spot as Gojo's rival and number two on this list is rightfully deserved. Number two. And last but not least, so coming at number Gojo, one is Satoru Gojo, master of the limitless. Being virtually untouchable by the rest of the cast, being able to easily overwhelm Mahito, Jogo, Choso, and Hanami all at once, one-shotting Uraume without any difficulty, 
Kenjaku stating that defeating Gojo is impossible after having a thousand years of Jujutsu experience, and Sukuna's respect for Gojo as a rival, we all know what Gojo can do. To this day, Gojo lives up to his name as the strongest. All right. All right, guys, that's it. If you enjoy content such as this, make sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing. Like left. Thank you so much for watching, and have an amazing day. Thank you. All right. So, if I do the clan, I say, 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 a W video. W video, W video. This is the second video of hundreds I've reacted. It's the second video of his I've ever seen. <laughs> so he has yet to disappoint. He has been hitting on every single thing. Obviously, you heard my contentions. I have some characters I believe should slide into the top ten. I have a character or two that may need to slide out of the top ten. But and I even have contentions on how the ranking itself goes. If I had to rank, let me think. If I had to rank the ten characters he chose. I on yeah. Oh, yeah, y'all gonna call me a Yuda hater and a uh, Maki a Maki purist, but like with scaling, direct scaling, the fifteen finger. I would my ranking would be number one Gojo, still number one Gojo, number two Sukuna, still. Is this is it blasphemous to say it may be blasphemous? Nah, Kenny's gotta be three. Kenny's gotta be three. Then low kiss. I mean, maybe, maybe we'll. You we know, we'll even keep Yuki four. We'll even keep Yuki four because her con. If she can negate concepts and like concept manipulation, then she should be able to negate soul liberation. She should be able to ignore that. So the top four stay the exact same. Then I would actually put. Mm, do I put Maki? Oh, do I put Maki? Uh, I'm gonna put Maki. I'm gonna put Maki. Cause that's speed scaling, bro. That's speed scaling plus plus Duraneg Soul Lib. That straight up attacks your soul. That's gotta go. She's faster than Yuta, obviously. She didn't get perception blitz by Sakuna, but guess who did? Ryu's Ryu, who Ryu was relative to Yuta in speed. So he's she's gotta be above Yuta because she could one shot him before he can put the ring on. Do done just like that, like that. Yorozu, Yorozu would put up a good fight against Maki, but considering her domain doesn't work, and Maki should be, once again, comparable in speed to her, I think Maki plus Soul Lib. I could understand putting Yorozu above, though, so Yorozu, Maki kind of tied. Then, Mahito at the bottom still makes sense. Mahito at the bottom still makes sense. Then, I put Yuda. Yuda above, Yuda beneath uh, Maki, Yorozu. Then, and Akari, and then Mahito, I think. Uh, then Suguru. Su Suguru would be above Hakari, but maybe beneath Yuta. I didn't even put, you know, I didn't put Suguru above Hakari. No, Suguru above uh, Yuta, and at least in my opinion, using these 10 characters. But still, regardless, a super W list. Super W list. However, that's his list. I told you something, some variation of his list through my views, but please leave your list in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please to like, share, comment, and subscribe. It makes it a little bit of a to miss out on videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon below where you're as low as one. Count them on. Now I'm up. Getting like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three as well to get the same perks and more. Now, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave. You to slander. <laughs> nah, 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 you to slander. Leave. Leave Ben 10. Leave Ben 10 in the comment section down below if you made it all the way to the end. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Dago the Pencil, writing off.